Bill Berrigan would be 86 years old today. But you know, Phil didn't like his birthday. And Phil never wanted a gift for his birthday. The only gift you could ever give Phil for his birthday was something for the whole community that is purchased and used in honor of his birthday. But you know what? He would love this birthday present. And I'm sure he does right now. Um, this war in Iraq and uh, Afghanistan began on this date in 2001. Supposedly a reaction to 9-11, but prepared, sisters and brothers, as we know, well in advance of 9-11. And in less than a year, Bush was agitating for war in Iraq, searching for weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Now three nuns, two of them from Jonah House Community, found those weapons, but they found them in Colorado. And they enacted a citizen's weapons inspection of those weapons, cutting the fence to expose the presence of first strike nuclear weapons on high alert. Come and see disarm. In April of the following year, 2003, they were convicted of sabotage, destruction of government property, a total flagrant miscarriage of justice. They did not do sabotage. They did not do felony destruction. There was no evidence for either. The judge and the prosecutor cuddled, coerced, and lied to the jury that they might convict with no understanding of what they were convicting those nuns of doing. For me, it was the fall of the other shoe of my beloved Phil's dying. We have loved so deeply, worked so hard, conspired, prayed, and been through so much together. And now we were being separated by years of prison. But Perhaps their trial and their sentencing are a mirror into which we all must look long and close to better understand the nature of this empire we live in and what we stand for and what we stand against. What I find myself reflecting on most of the time is the long view, because the short ones are really hard. And that is a tough perspective for most North Americans who have yet to learn that the quick fix is neither. So, I look at the struggle in South Africa. I vividly recall sitting on my bed in Alderson Federal Prison in May of 1986 and listening to a news report that the struggle against apartheid in South Africa was then being carried by nine-year-olds. Nine-year-olds. The adults were all dead or in prison. And it felt so impossible and so hopeless. Hmm? Four years later, Nelson Mandela was released after 27 years in prison. And four years later, he was the president the first black president of South Africa. And I find myself reflecting on the Palestinians who struggle and whose ties to their land go back centuries, centuries, and whose children can only see giving their lives in this struggle. Hmm? Our Central and South Americas, Americans who have to renew their strength not only every day, but every generation, every generation. And I look at the history of our own country and the struggle of working people, people of color, women. None of these struggles is ever won. None of them is ever finished. All of them tell us one thing, that we don't get everything we struggle for, but we don't get anything we don't fight for.
And that stands against one of what I think are the tragedies in this country, the sense that our freedom is a possession. And thank you, the uh, woman who spoke here earlier about the struggle for freedom of black Americans. We can't own it, sisters and brothers. The sense that we could and that we have it and that it's ours has made us the most pathetic and enslaved people in the whole world. In his last major talk, Phil pleaded with thousands of people assembled here in D.C. Don't get weary, he said. Don't get weary. So I want to echo Phil today. Don't get weary in the face of a world that has embraced endless war and bankrupting military spending and ever newer weapons of mass destruction. A world where lies pass for truth. Sound bites for wisdom, arrogance for understanding. And don't get weary as citizens of this preeminent rogue state, rife with deceit and treachery, where leader follows leader from bad to worse, as though by a malign law of nature, one ruler evil or stupid or violent breeds another more evil or stupid or violent. And it may explain our periodic nostalgia 